you know i think i think uh, uh, the best part about being uh, sick is that you know it is not something passive uh you, you it's not that you're born into this and you, it's not about the religiosity of it i mean though that's a great part that's a very important part of it it's about who you need to be as a person and uh, and the interesting thing is you know you can you can forget ke sure matha ni take care you can forget to hmm. to uh, uh, pray you can or you can choose not to pray but every morning when you stand in front of the mirror your identity confronts you you know anybody else who is an atheist can just go on with this day without without even being reminded even once who he or she where he or she comes from but if you're a sick you get up every morning you you get to see yourself in the mirror and you're reminded of your roots so i think it's it's, it's that thing you know it's, it's sort of about the religiosity of it i think it's the uh, it's the fundamental of who you are you know the the concept of service tolerance uh, uh standing up for what is right standing up for the for the weak one in the fight i think all those things are very important uh and i think uh, uh, somehow i i managed to uh, uh take them with me outside of the house as well and I, i'm quite happy about that yeah Good evening and satsrikal everyone uh, welcome to the 6th episode of uh, sings in conversation uh, it's an absolute delight to be hosting this one we have an absolutely brilliant guest uh, on with us today uh, tarvinder tarvinder jit vee ji uh, he is someone who has more than 20 years of experience uh, in advertising an absolute absolute legend in advertising uh, one of the greats uh, and i'm personally very excited more than uh you know more than the audience i am excited to talk to him and learn from him an absolute gem of a guy uh and i look forward to a really interesting and long and beautiful episode today uh and we'll start in a bit uh, but if you see the quality of work that he's done he's done work for samsung metlife unicef chevrolet and and not just any normal work if you see some of his work on youtube uh for samsung if you if you've ever uh, seen that ad with its service mechanic goes to a school up in the hills uh, to work with a blind college a uh, blind school uh, that ad itself has more than 200 million views uh, you know on youtube it's it's routinely touted as one of the best and most emotional ads to ever come out of india and he's done a bunch of other stuff uh, uh, for multiple other brands and storytelling is his, is his passion is his art and he's been at it for 20 years and you know it's going to be an amazing opportunity for all of you who are going to join in and listen to us it will be an absolute delight uh waiting for him to join as soon as he joins we'll start off uh today uh, for the session if you have any questions uh, that you want to ask me uh you can and ask uh, tarvinder vee ji uh, you can absolutely post post them in the question section and i'll ask them for you uh that's that's how we're going to conduct the whole session uh hope you enjoy the session and you like it uh it's going to be great amazing fun uh waiting for him to join uh till then i think it's a saturday evening grab your tea tap some biscuits settle in it's going to be a great long conversation uh and we'll have some good fun you know till the covid uh, period locks us down uh you know just head over to tarvinder jeet singh tarvinderjeet.com uh, which is his website and see the bunch of ads that he's done uh, for different uh, you know portfolios you know some of the ads just bring me to tears uh, such wonderful such beautiful ads uh they bring me to tears in kind of the storytelling that's done the kind of emotional depth they have uh it's absolutely amazing to watch so shikal veer ji how are you hi i i can hear you can you hear me can you hear me now yes i can hear you well and good ah i think there was some trouble with the with the Like I said, I had fixed up with it. Anyway, how are you doing? I am doing very, very good. How are you? How's the lockdown treating you? Where are you put up during the lockdown? <laughs> so actually, this now is a, a, a different kind of lockdown for me uh, because I came to drop my parents to their house, and uh, uh, so I have sort of hung around uh, okay. for the last four five days over here. So uh, without uh, 
the appropriate supplies and without uh, turbans and my my regular clothes so yeah so this is this is now different kind of lockdown so but yeah, it's been going good yeah okay great to have you here i was just telling you know the uh, the listeners that you know and the viewers that you're someone who has had such a great and long career you know i can't do justice describing it so i'll hand it over to you uh, just let us know your whole career your upbringing how has it been i would love to start with that and then we'll take it along so we have only half an hour right we have more don't worry about that we have more <laughs> okay yeah. so yeah okay uh, uh, so i'm a, i'm a, i'm a delhi boy uh born and brought up here uh because of singh style so i am proud to say that i went to ghps basant vihar nice. uh so i i did my schooling there i then i uh i went to an engineering college it's called thapar institute of engineering and technology okay so i went there i was doing mechanical over there i dropped out in the final year and i joined nice. an advertising agency so i didn't finish my degree i went and joined advertising uh it was with an agency called Leo Burnett and uh, so yeah so ever since i've been in advertising it's been uh, 20 years this year actually uh nice. and so yeah i it's it's been a it's been a good ride in advertising i i've sort of managed to do some decent work and uh, uh yeah so uh, it's it's been a nice run interesting i think uh, the the point that you know earlier when we were talking a couple of days earlier the one point that really struck me and i just want to build on that a bit uh the fact that you dropped out of engineering you know how did that come about how did you manage the reactions of friends family because in india may that there is a thing right engineering karo do that engineering complete your graduation how did the decision come about how did you take it up with your friends family so uh, i'm going to start with a health warning i do not advise this to anybody so <laughs> you 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 go to school you do well uh, you finish your degree and then do what you want to do you know uh because it works out for some people and i don't think it works out for a lot of people as well so so don't take this risk uh, uh, don't listen to people who just were lucky like me or or some other guys you know I mean, they're billionaires i'm not so i don't think it worked out for me at all uh, but yeah so look, the reaction wasn't good and to be honest all of them were right uh whoever told me that uh, uh, finish this is just uh, uh, what 10 months more i think they were all right and uh, uh, and i wish i'd listen to them then uh but yeah so i mean but uh, but i was passionate about advertising and i it felt like i should not uh, delay it anymore uh so yeah i mean i i i ended up dropping out and then joining advertising but it it wasn't it wasn't a, it wasn't a pleasant decision for a lot of people uh, around me and uh, uh, they tried their best but i was obstinate and i wish i wasn't so so that's a that's a that's an advice to everybody just Finish your degree. Listen to your parents and family. Do not drop out, no matter what you want to do after that. You know, well taken. I think, but I think you did really well for yourself. And you know, very interesting is that out of engineering, so you dropped out, but you joined advertising. How did that? Uh, you said you have passion for that. How did that passion come about? Why advertising? You know, it's a very non-engineering career to begin with. Like an MBA is heard of, or other things are heard of, but advertising not heard of. Uh. Yeah, so now this is where your viewers will start dropping off because they'll realize <laughs> that it wasn't uh, uh, again a, a thought through choice, you know. Because uh, there used to be this this show on television on Doordarshan actually called A Mouthful of Sky, and which okay. had a uh, 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 Milind Soman, which had uh, Sanjeev Muchandani and Rahul Bose. In fact, he, I think he made his debut right. on television with that. And uh, in that show, all of them, all, these three guys, I, if I remember correctly, all of them were in advertising. and oh, uh, they had this this amazingly cool life with lots of money lots of women uh, lots of uh, uh, glamour and, uh, and and i got i got struck by that you know thought i mean that seems like a cool thing to do uh, so yeah i mean so it 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 wasn't as if there was somebody in the family or i knew someone in advertising or i even knew how advertising operates it just that uh, uh, some people watch movies and want to become uh, uh, go to the army or to the police force mm-hmm. some become doctors i had to become an ad guy so again uh, uh, it wasn't very considered uh, but it's just worked out so i'm happy it worked out great i think great to hear that uh, you know the one point that you just said you know that you got ad- into advertising because you know the clamor and everything and and you love it and you be- and you grew to love it and i've seen across your career right you moved to some of the top agencies that work in india you know how do you make that decision that you know this is the next step in your life so for this that your journey was motivated by seeing something on television and really enjoying the glamour of it but as you grew as a person 
what motivates you to take those moves in career and in life uh so you know the reason why i did not want to become an engineer or or a doctor and this is this is with all respect to both these professions you know uh because i felt that you know life will will sort of assume this air of sameness you know that monday will not be that different from thursday or from a saturday or you know it felt like it will be it will be like, sort of like a flat line and i didn't want to do the same thing over and over again and advertising gives you that option you know like you have a different channel in a different brand every day uh so what happens in in uh, but if you work in the same agency you end up working on the same brand for a very long period of time and that is that is again you know it, it works really well for a lot of people yeah uh, but for me uh, uh, uh it's i mean i i saw it sometimes i would just get bored uh so i didn't want that but not only in my life other there have been times when i've been sacked from those jobs so <laughs> so again you know uh, uh, sometimes it's been it's been out of choice out of restlessness sometimes it's been because I've been too naughty at work. <laughs> Very interesting to know. Uh, just wanted to figure out, you know, you said the sameness part. You know that engineering and medical seem like sameness to you, and obviously you want to avoid that. Uh, you know, what's your criteria for evaluating that you are stagnating or are you doing are you doing the same work? Is it just working on the same client, or I've had this kind of creative streak and I'm done with it, and I want to have a different creative high, or I want to work with different people? What defines that? What's your criteria when you make uh, choices? So I mean uh, for me there is only and only one criteria when it gets too easy okay. is when you know that you know uh, it's becoming the same every day for you know because now because you know uh, if you understand uh, if if it if it rolls off too easily it means that you are you're part of the establishment you're not the creative voice uh, uh, over there so i think that that would be uh, an alarm bell for me you know like if i could just walk in and and start uh, rattling out good scripts it it I mean, if it gets too easy, it means uh, you're not challenging yourself. The place is not challenging you. The brand is not challenging you anymore, and that's a good sign. Very interesting. I think the point that you said that when it gets easy is is when you. It's very simple. It's like a one line criteria. It's a one point criteria. Uh, related to that, you know, how do you define then when you know how do you define success for yourself? So a lot of people define success by multiple metrics for for them. So some of them it's moving in one career path or in one organization to a senior level. for some it's doing creative work uh, for some it's doing interesting work every day for what what for you uh, you know define success and how do you how did you come about that metric in life how did you figure out that that was the criteria i wanted to have uh so in advertising i think there is there uh, uh, there cannot be any other criteria except actual impact uh if your work creates impact if people talk about it if the brand does well if and as a consequence you get famous so especially advertising is all about about making brands famous so when they get famous and people talk about the brand because of the work you did uh, uh so that that's the criteria so impact is the one word that you that every advertising guy should need to uh, i mean that, that that's that's the the one thing you need to go for impact makes a lot of sense uh, i was looking at some of your work uh, you know on your website that you've done with samsung and it's it's the kind of themes they touch upon especially you know the story of uh, the sadanand the guy who goes off to school or seema nadar who goes off to the you know training uh, institute in jaipur uh, you know did you uh, make that transition because you wanted to you know create that kind of impact or was it how the client wanted it so there's a lot of storytelling as well so how do you bring in those inspirations how what are the values that you bring in when you do advertising work with a lot of clients uh So, so you know, when I started out, a lot. Uh, I mean, my uh, uh, my selfish motive used to be to do uh, funny work. Uh, I wanted to create funny ads, funny, funny TV commercials. Uh, because you know, I mean, I that that's your that's your life stage. You know, when you're younger, you sort of you sort of carefree and you want to uh, uh, just have fun. You know, I mean, so that so as as I grew up, uh, as as you know, your thoughts become more complex. Uh, I think that this sort of opened up this this uh, uh, this bit of uh, doing emotional work as well, and at, as it happened, Samsung wanted to do a very Indian, uh, very uh, in fact, both of them are are sort of inspired from real life people, uh, both yeah. Sadanand's story and Seema Nadar's story. So they are real life people. Uh, obviously, we have creatively amplified the story, uh, 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 but. But the thing is, you know, I mean, it just so happened. This was a good, it was a lucky confluence that I was in that stage in life, 
and I found a client was uh, uh, was ready to go along on that journey, and uh, uh, and we ended up with a with a great product. Amazing, and you know, and that theme I was hearing in one of your interviews as well. You know that you would any day value creativity over analytical you know frame of mind, and that lends into storytelling. Uh, for a lot of brands that you know, when you go to create a brand today, and especially in a lot of brands, this is a digital age. There's so many channels you can go and advertise on. How important is the role of storytelling still today when you're going out and creating your brand, even for younger startups or anyone who's starting or creating a brand today with so many options to advertise on? So I, you know, I I I don't uh, remember uh, the interview uh, that you're speaking of, but but I would rate I would rate you know both uh, I think both play a role. Uh, you need to be both left brain and right brain, and I think that is where the engineering experiences help. You know, because engineers are problem solvers. You know, by nature, yeah. Uh, you see, you see something and you break it down into a million small problems subconsciously, and you solve each one of them uh, uh, step by step. And I think that experience has helped me a lot in advertising. That training has helped me a lot. Uh, so yeah, I mean, so you would need that skill as well. You need to see a problem. And you need to because you know you need to solve problems in the real world. Uh, advertising is not fine art. You have to uh, uh, create business for the brand. You're not just on a, you're not just going to write a, a, a good a good script or, or a good ad for to please mm-hmm. yourself or to hang out to hang in your own bedroom. Uh, so you you need to be uh, uh, mature. You need to be analytical. You need to have reasoning, and then you need that leap of creativity. So creativity is the icing. Uh, uh, Maybe more than the icing, uh, maybe a lot more than the icing. But uh, let, let's say okay. So you need you need the the pizza base of reasoning, and the toppings is what then uh, makes the pizza burgers. Interesting. I think the point that you mentioned that you know the advertising needs to all also you know keep in mind that it's going to bring business for the brand. Uh, you know when you a lot of the a lot of times today you know there is a battle between performance marketing on social media and marketing for building brands. Uh, and there is a lot of maths that goes behind not tracking conversions or embedding pixels into your work. Uh, do you think that takes away from uh, the real creativity that should keep going on in advertising? Has it become too mechanical how brands advertise or market themselves, or is it still the same? Or do you see different categories of brands doing different things? So you know, this is interesting. What is happening in advertising nowadays? I think it's very interesting, and I think technology needs to be embraced. Uh, that if technology is allowing us uh, to measure things, I think that's a very, very welcome change. We need to know what works with people. We need to know what they don't like. We need to know what to watch. Uh, however, you know what is what also happens nowadays is because it is measurable, doesn't mean it's meaningful. Hmm. So, so, so just uh, just as an example, you know, if somebody is 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 watching this live, and I say watching, I mean he put it on, but he's not paying attention. The the number will go up by one. But yeah. uh, but the, but it, it had no uh, impact in that person's life, you know. Uh, so I think just because it's measurable doesn't make it meaningful, and I think that's an important uh, uh, baseline to it. But technology is important. I think it's got the measurability of things. This uh, the, uh, the I mean the the advent of big data is going to change advertising. I hope for the better, and uh, I think I think this game has just begun. So let's see where this takes us. Makes sense. And uh, you know, coming to that, you know, across these years, what 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 have been your favorite brands to work with, and why? You know, knowing that these are the multiple factors that different brands will take into place. Uh, what have been your favorite brands, and why? So, uh, right off the top of my head, I think I, I have to give it to Samsung. Uh, a, a terrific brand to work for. Terrific brand. You know, I mean, they have the scale. Uh, they have the aura. And uh, they have the appetite to do good work, and I happened to be there when when the Samsung team in India was uh, was very open to new thinking, and which showed in the which showed in the work. So I think I would I, in in uh, because of my journey with them, I would rate Samsung at at number one, two, and three. Uh, and then you know there were other brands that I've been very lucky to work on. I I really like enjoyed working on Chevrolet. I've yeah. enjoyed working on 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 Delhi Police. You know, for of all things. Nice. Uh, Delhi Police. Uh, uh, I've done a lot of good work for Delhi Police, and uh, I remember the the police commissioner then, Mr. Neeraj Kumar, uh, great gate patron of creativity. Uh, you know, you don't associate these things with the with the police yeah. force, but uh, but terrific guy, and uh, he could be the CMO of any company. I mean, that gentleman has the intelligence to uh, to run circles around NDS any day. 
So yeah, so Samsung, Chevrolet, Delhi Police, yeah, I think that would be my top three. In fact, I love your Chevrolet ad, you know, the car has finally come out of the box. I think the whole storytelling <laughs> that, you know, when he goes and yeah, the Amazon box is outside his house and there's a car, Chevrolet car in it. It's, it's like a surprise uh, twist at the end. It goes on the ad, does it build up in the first and second, but the, the last 20 seconds, it really picks up as a story, really beautifully done. <laughs> Uh, you know, and you know, I've always wondered. You know, for a, for one of your most popular ads, the one that you did with Samsung, uh, where the service mechanic goes to the hills and actually repairs the TV, which has more than two hundred billion views on YouTube. You know, how does that whole journey come about for a campaign like that, uh, right from your scratch uh, when you're leading your team and finally get to getting it shot and getting it across to different platforms? You know, how how does that journey happen in advertising? Really interested to know that. So, uh, 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 you know, there's actually a nice anecdote behind it. So, the gentleman who was running the uh, the brief on the client side had a very tough reputation, you know. And okay. uh, a lot of creative people did not want to sort of, you know, work with him because he's a tough guy. He doesn't approve things easily. And uh, when I when I got to know that I'm going to be working with him on this project, I, in fact, I declared, you know, I, uh, it's not even that I kept it quiet. I said, I'm going to win an award on whatever I do with this gentleman. So I think I, you have to start, I think what is important is you have to start with a big ambition. Because uh, I think if you, cause like everybody says that, you know, aim for the moon. I mean, how, how, at least you'll, I don't know what, it's something like that, right? Aim for the stars, you'll reach the moon, Land something the like moon. that. So you get the point, right? You, you have to set yourself a really big, audacious goal. Uh, and then uh, uh, listen to people you're working with. So in this case, the client, the customer, you understand what his problems are. And uh, then you give the best possible solution. After that is a difficult part because once you present the best solution from your point of view, you have to sort of hold your ground as well. And uh, uh, hold your ground well, let people know you're the expert and you're going to do a good job. After that, you do assemble a great team, you know, the, the great team that you that's going to produce the film. Uh, and once that product is made, then you have to uh, 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 hope that a lot of people like it. And a lot of people get to see it, you know, with the weight of the brand behind it. So, you know, like I said, you know, it, it, it's nice for me to sort of lay claim, but a lot of things have to go right. A lot of people have to buy into your vision and you have to be humble and patient enough to allow them into your your sort of journey in that sense. You know? Makes sense. I think, I, I think what's very wonderful that you said, you know, that you take on a very big audacious goal. Uh, what are the what are those other learnings or other key success mantra that have you know stood well during those twenty years? That you know, if I follow these uh, benchmarks or these these qualities or these things in my life, it's going to turn out great. And how did you come about learning them? Um, so you know, I haven't. Uh, uh, so my it's not that you know I look at every brief or every project that comes our way and I say you know fine, I'm these three things need to happen. I don't have them pinned them to my soft board. Uh, but I think you you develop this instinct that you know if I if I do this this way, uh, it's gonna uh, that that's what's required for the. Brand. I think the first I mean I'm talking only of advertising now when you make an ad. Uh, the first thing is it needs to it needs to do the job. There is a business objective to every ad. The ad needs to get it done. It needs to be engaging. It needs to be refreshing. It needs to be relevant. I mean, if you if you get these four things right, you you've got a winner on your hands. So I mean, yeah, instinctively you go and you you run for these three four things, uh, but it's not that you have a, che uh, a checklist and you say, okay, I'm going to knock these these things off. Amazing, amazing. I'm going to jump a jump a bridge and go to the next set of questions. Uh, you know, being a Sikh, that's a big part of your identity. You know, what are those elements that you carry in your work of the Sikh faith, or you know, general how you view the faith yourself that have stayed you good, that have held you in good ground? What are those uh, elements that you take from the Sikh culture? And the faith. So you, know, you know, I think I think uh, uh, the best part about being a Sikh is that you know it is not something passive. Uh, you, you, it's not that you're born into this, and you, it's not about the religiosity of it. I mean, though that's a great part, that's a very important part of it. It's about who you need to be as a person, and uh, and the interesting thing is, you know, you can you can forget case very matani take care. You can forget to mm. to uh, uh, pray. You can. Or you can choose not to pray. But every morning when you stand in front of the mirror, your identity confronts you. You know, anybody else who's an atheist can just go on with his day without without even being reminded even once who he or she where he or she comes from. But if you're a sick, you get up every morning, 
you you get to see yourself in the mirror and you're reminded of your roots so i think it's it, it's that thing you know it's, it's not about the religiosity of it i think it's the uh, it's the fundamental of who you are you know the the concept of service tolerance uh, uh standing up for what is right standing up for the for the weak one in the fight i think all those things are very important uh and i think uh, uh, somehow i i managed to uh, uh, take them with me outside of the house as well and i'm quite happy about that yeah absolutely i think one of the things you mentioned right when you work with tougher clients you have to stand your ground across the whole you know journey <laughs> when you start creating yeah. it and when it finally lands on the ground if you feel, if you feel it's right it's maybe the right kind of values uh, it has it will stand yeah. and you will fight for it i think i think that you know it's sometimes it's very uh, consciously you take forward things and sometimes it's subconscious and you're doing things because you've invited them since you were a kid uh i think it makes a lot of sense uh, that's very beautifully said that it's not passive you can't forget that you're a sick like uh, as you rightly mentioned like an atheist can you can go about your life without worrying about religion or anything at all uh you can just be a human being and nothing else i think very very nicely said uh you know one i now merge uh, two questions about sick faith and you know about uh, about Uh, advertising for a lot of uh, sick uh, individuals and individuals general in fact when you want to break into advertising uh, you did that break and you got into your bonnet and you started uh, doing copywriting how do you get a break in advertising do you do you suggest doing a degree for it or do you think it's more gain through experience and picking up a job and what advice do you have for sick youth to actually break out and uh, adopt uh, a job in this in this you know industry uh so you know the, the, there is there is merit in going and getting a, a sort of a degree or a diploma in advertising but not for the reasons that that it that it looks like you know so you don't get the degree to to learn about advertising i think that is learned on the job advertising is a is a skill you pick up on the job uh you if you have the fundamentals of creativity uh, and problem solving inside of you i think you will uh you can learn advertising only when you in an agency where these degrees and these courses help you is with, with networking actually so some visiting faculty will come you can patawa them maybe some of your friends get a job so you can uh, uh, ride on their backs i think the degrees are important to uh, to network the uh, there are uh, uh, but otherwise to, to get a job i think all you need to do is cold call uh you need to have a portfolio uh you need to learn about advertising a bit i think it's not that difficult anymore uh, you can look up google you can find out stuff and you need to develop a, a portfolio and a, a very thick skin you just need to cold call because they're not uh, advertising is not that uh that that lavish an employer as, as it used to be so there are there are fewer jobs to go around but just just cold call cold call cold call and 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 see. pester your creative directors or your account directors or, or vice presidents and someone someone or the other will give you a, a low paying intern's job and you're going to lap it up and uh, and make the best of it makes sense i think good advice just uh, cold call people and second is maintain a portfolio and the third is take advertising the bulk of it happens in the job you can take some fundamental oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. degree yeah. but the bulk happens in the job i think great lessons there uh, you know one thing that i also we also discussed the other day that you're very passionate about helping sick entrepreneurs you're starting something uh, about that just wanted to hear what that initiative is and you know how can sick entrepreneurs willing to take the next leap out of careers and starting their own firms what can they how can they avail that how can they connect with you and take that forward so uh, uh you know the thing is that i i feel very strongly that i think uh, uh i it feels to me i i'm I, sh- i hope i'm wrong it feels to me that you know there aren't enough enough uh, uh, sick uh, uh, women and men in the ias the ips uh in 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 the arts in the or in, even in sports nowadays you know when I mean, you don't see mm-hmm. uh, uh, as many even in the army you don't see as many as as they used to be and i think uh, uh, each one of us should do something about that uh, because you know what has happened is only two poles of of reference left for sick children are either k either religious part of it uh, which mm-hmm. is uh, or then the other the pop culture you know there are no heroes in between and hmm. i think we need to develop those heroes and we need to help as much as we can you know uh, uh, so uh, so which is why you know i i mean i don't want to sort of say ki i'll give money or donation because i think that's that's easier hmm. a very small thing to do what i want to do is if there are sick entrepreneurs who who need some branding and marketing advice 
uh, they can they can send me an email. My DMs are open, uh, and I would I would I would like to help them out and uh, with whatever experience I have. If if that helps them build a better brand, build a better business, get more successful, I'll be really happy to do this. Uh, if they can't afford me, it's free of charge, not a problem at all. Awesome. What's the best way to reach you? We'll 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 you know broadcast this on our networks as well. What's the best way to reach out to you for help? So you can uh, uh, you can send me a DM. You can follow me. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. There's also an email. I don't know if you can note it down. Uh, that is Tarvinder uh, T A R B I N D E R at the rate Barkat Collective. So that's what I'm going to call it. Barkat awesome. Collective B A R K A T Collective dot com. Uh, send me an email. Uh, uh, I think it's easier to sort of just send me a DM right now. I don't know if people have a pen handy. But uh, uh, but I'll be happy to help any sick entrepreneurs who need who need any advice uh, or any sort of encouragement in terms of branding, marketing, anything at all. Awesome. Uh, so you know, to all the viewers who are watching, we'll publish this. Uh, we'll publish details about how to reach BG uh, after this conversation. His DMs are open, as he said. But Barkat Collective is what he's starting. Uh, we wish you all the success that you will get with it, and hopefully more and more brands and more and more you know uh, you know entities run by six. And we see six in different careers as well. Uh, jumping towards uh, the one final question, and we'll move to a rapid fire after that. Uh, you know, what advice do you have for Sikh youth who are entering their careers? How do they carry their faith or their culture and identity along with their work? Uh, how do they carry that forward and be associated with the religion and the culture while they do it? Uh, taking pride in the pagadi. How, how? What are those facets that you think are important? So you know, I think the the first thing is that uh, uh, I, you. You need to learn about your roots, about your history, to know how uh, how grateful you need to be that uh, that you must be because you're born into this faith. Uh, once you read into our history, once you see what what has gone into making us who we are, the sense of pride uh, that you'll get will be so organic and natural and and unshakable. You know, uh, uh, so you need to learn about who we who you are uh, to begin with. After that, just just wear your faith with pride. It doesn't mean you have to rub it in anybody's face. Just wear it with pride, and uh, so uh, don't don't shy with about who you are. That's that's the most important thing. Also, you know, the, another thing is that you know uh, uh, because the turban is such a such a defining part of of our, our of our appearance. I think what needs to be kept in mind is it's also a symbol. So you need to wear it with responsibility. That what actions you do wearing a turban. Can reflect on 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 the entire community. You know, in that sense, you know, you I I, I don't know if it makes sense to people listening, yeah. but because it's such a strong, iconic uh, uh, a part of the religion, anybody uh, who wears a turban, his or her uh, his action, or maybe even her action, I, are are sort of bound to get translated to to other people. And and you know, in fact, we have all of us have benefited from that. From that uh, uh, mirroring, you know, a lot of people think that Sikhs are hardworking, brave, yeah. frank, honest. Because I'm wearing a turban, and they met a guy who wore a turban and acted that way. So the sense of responsibility is 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 is. I think we should not lose sight of that as well. Wear it with yeah. pride, be responsible, and uh, nothing's going to stop. Yeah, I think I'll summarize it by well, you know what Spider-Man always says: "With great power comes great responsibility." <laughs> so, yeah. so that's what it is. I think very beautifully said that you know you can learn your roots and obviously have pride in what you're doing and be very mindful of the culture you carry a legacy of more than 500 years with you, and it's visible and it's on. It's it's a part of your identity. Uh, I think wonderfully yeah. said. Uh, you know, fun. Now the final round. I'll ask you some rapid-fire questions. Uh, answer in less than five words, please. Uh, first, uh, favorite book, please. Favorite book. Uh, I quite like the suitable boy. Actually, uh, uh, I don't yes. think I've read a book that thick after that, but I quite liked it. Yeah, so uh, so yes. I'll go with that. One, yeah. There's a BBC documentary coming on it. A BBC adaptation. I am very, I, I'm very scared of the 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 trailer. I've seen the trailer. I'm I'm very scared. No, no, no. Sepia tinted. <laughs> uh, last book that you've read. The last book that I've read, I can't remember. I I've been reading the sellout. I don't think I finished it, but I've been reading okay. the sellout. Yeah. Are you a fan of podcast or not? Podcast, uh, not really. To be honest, I I don't think I'm I'm a fan or not. I think that's a that's a big word. I just haven't time. I haven't had the time to come around to uh, genuinely enjoying and having a point of view on podcasts. 
I just Favorite haven't brand. had the time. That's the honest answer. Sorry? Okay. Favorite brand in India? Favorite? Sing side. <laughs> I can <laughs> Second favorite, second favorite. Did also read the second favorite. So you, you, you mean an Indian brand, is it? Yes, an Indian brand uh, or a brand uh, operating in India, both ways. Uh, so that would be good I work quite, in India. Uh, uh, so that brand would be Apple. You know, I think I have a lot of respect for for uh, the way the the company has been consistent uh, for a large part of its journey and for for the confidence it has. You know, I think they have not never doubted themselves about who they are. And, who they want to speak to and I really like that. Amazing. Uh, top two inspirations in life? People who have inspired you? Uh, I'd say my parents. Uh, uh, okay. Nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, you know, like my, my I, 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 the way I think of them is my father has done the, has done the theory bit on, on Sikhism and my mother's done the practical. So, I've learned a lot about religion from my father and I've learned how to be a good Sikh from my mother. So, in that sense, both of them are... Oh, it's, an, it's an amazing balance, right? Someone teaching you both things. <laughs> yeah. uh, favorite music or musician? Favorite music? Or musician? I'll tell you who, who my favorites are not. Is, okay. Can I, can I answer that? Yes, you I can. Don't you like, turn it around, yeah. I don't like these Punjabi guys who talk only of vodka and guns and stalking girls. I think uh, that's what I ch I'm not on board with that. So I'll okay. tell you what I don't like. That's what I don't like. <laughs> okay. Uh, favorite food? Favorite food? Yeah. I, uh, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a very fussy guy. If it's healthy, if it's clean. Uh, I'll go for it. I I quite like uh, Japanese. I mean, if given a choice, I'll pick Japanese. Japanese. But, okay. uh, yeah. But if it's healthy, it's clean, and, and uh, I'm gonna go for it. Great. Uh, one destination you want to travel to after all of this is over, hopefully. One. Uh, I, I I want to go back to London. Actually, I just I I was there last year. I quite I really like the city, and I want to see more of it. Yeah. Uh, the city you want to retire in. I'm ne I genuinely haven't given that a thought. <laughs> I have this, this I'll think about and get back to you. I haven't, I haven't thought about this. Great. Amazing. I think thank you for answering that. Uh, any parting words uh, for you know people listening in, the Sikh youth listening in? Uh, and we close with that. Uh, so, uh, uh, the, only, the only thing I want to say is that, you know, uh, we, need, we need more role models who wear turbans, who carry their Sikh with pride. And uh, uh, I hope all of you get the strength, the wisdom, and all the good luck, you know, to, to become those role models. I think uh, we need a lot more of, of young blood who's doing many different things. Uh, uh, and I hope uh, to see a lot of you making all of us very proud. Great. Thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure having you. I don't know what the time has been. You know, it's. I think it's been an hour. It's been 45 minutes. I don't know, but it's been great fun. Uh, thank you so much. Keep doing more and more work that brings me to tears and others to tears in a good way. Uh, and uh, best of luck with everything. And thank you so much. And we'll make sure that, you know, we'll send more and more people connecting to your way on Barkat Collective. Uh, and we make that a success. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Sashikal, everyone. Uh, signing off. Uh, see us for the next episode next week, Saturday, same time at 6 p.m. Hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you so much. Sorry? Okay. Favorite brand in India? Favorite Sing side. <laughs>